watch it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we don't want to offend somebody. Right. We don't know what to think. Can you talk a little bit about language and and you use words like crazy and batshit, <laughs> nutcase, and then nutcase, Bonkers. and is that how? we should be thinking about our <laughs> our friends in the world. Not so much your friends. It's helpful to me to be thinking of myself in that way, not, not at all in a pejorative sense. What I do with that language is punch a hole in the stigma of it. If I own those words and say, hell, I'm crazy, it's a lot easier for me to think about the days when, in fact, I'm crazy. Uh, it's a lot easier for me to deal with the darker sides of it if I can keep an eye on the humor, on the absurdity, and use language that does bring some lightness to it. Okay. Um, the the other thing, and um, I, I I think that many people are would-be writers. There are many people that have incredible experiences. Mm -hmm. Um, many people that have tragic experiences and your bravery in writing about this in writing so honestly was just stunning. Um, exposing family secrets and talking, talking about real things that affect real people can sometimes be a barrier mm -hmm. to someone writing. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would think that there's many a good story that's been put off because, <laughs> because you know, what, what will somebody think? Sure. And you went there. Can you talk about um, what kind of response you've gotten from your family? Both your first book was called Wasted, mm -hmm. so you have a, a history of, right. of dealing with uh, with tough subjects. Yeah. Um, but what kind of response have you gotten from family and friends who might not have been portrayed in always flattering terms right, in the right. book? Right. My family has been incredibly supportive with this. They have they have very much allowed me to step forward and tell the family stories um, and to portray the family, including myself, in ways that are not always flattering because we're not always flatterable. <laughs> we, don't always, we don't always come out, you know, white as snow, and I especially in this book don't come out white as snow. In this book, one of the things that's different about Wasted is it deals with me as an adult. It deals with an adult experience of mental illness. Wasted dealt with an earlier period of my life where my parents were much more engaged, um, and so it addressed my relationship with my parents more so. In this, in this book, I'm dealing with the adult relationship with my parents, which is quite tight, and they are incredibly supportive of what I do, including my work and including me bringing out information about the family. Your mother would, came through just incredibly supportive. She was a saint, I mean. <laughs> she, <laughs> <laughs> my mother she is was. a wonderful, and she is an incredible support. So is my father. They are absolutely just right there with me all the time. I think every writer finds a voice from a, a voice perspective. There's, a, there's some different strains mm -hmm. in the book. Uh, and as I was reading it, there were two most of it, I think, feels very day, day to day. Mm -hmm. It's, it's um, first person mm -hmm. voice. There are two places in the book. One, the, the rotten guest pack, yeah. Madness is a Rotten Guest Passage that you read to us. The other little earlier in the book where um, you kind of take on the analytic voice. Mm -hmm. You say, you sort of come out of the experience and then say, and if you're thinking of going to get help and they're just going to help you and you're going <laughs> to know that they're going to be able to fix it, think again. Mm -hmm. and, and so you talk about um, the, the capacity of the mental health profession to mm -hmm. diagnose mm -hmm. and, and the kind of help you can expect. Can you talk about that? as a writer, that change of voice. Was that conscious? Why did you do that? It was an editorial decision we made that when you were going into a book this intense, when you were going to be in the front seat for a very rocky ride, you needed to have some context in the real world where you could say, <clears throat> this is an illness with social consequences. This is, a, this is a physical illness that deals with the medical profession. I felt that you needed to have some sort of grounding in these are the facts, these are the things that you will deal with if this is a problem of yours. And for the general reader, this is the context where people are not able to get the help that they need. There are a lot of helpful facts at the end of the mm -hmm. book. There's a, there's a resource guide, there are websites, there's uh, helpful contacts, there's facts about the illness. Um, was that an editor's choice or did you have a mission in writing the book besides just telling, you know, putting out a good story well told? Absolutely. I was, you know, this is, this is uh, an attempted advocacy 
for uh -huh. mental health uh, against stigma as well. There was an editorial decision made at some point. Originally, this book went back and forth between the more objective and the more subjective voices, as in those two passages that you're talking about, the way that Wasted did, where it goes back and forth between journalism and you know, creative nonfiction. We decided eventually to excise all of the journalistic information and condense it into that one passage of facts about, about bipolar so that people could get it nice and cut and dried. Okay. Um, among other things, it's a story about personal tragedy. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is. Um, but yet the book has been described as funny. I didn't laugh out loud myself, but um, can you talk about the role of humor in, in your work and it, your, your process? Absolutely. I laughed out loud writing it. I'll tell you that much. Um, and, you know, I go to these readings and, you know, sometimes you have these very intense, serious audiences and sometimes people are just rolling on the floor. Um, the role of humor in my writing is, has always been, it's just part of how I think. It's part of how I write. I have a certain sense of absurdity about the world. It comes through in my writing. In this it very much comes through in my ability to step back from I have this difficult painful mental illness to this is how I live this is simply the hand I'm dealt this is the way that I deal with it and some of those days some of those not totally stable days are pretty funny after they happen <laughs> <laughs> right after right after that um, let's talk about the concept of the suffering artist mm -hmm. um, does does the illness drive and inspire your work, or have you achieved, and, and, and then if the, if the answer is yes, I have fears for you, <laughs> oh no, what will the next book be about? Right. But um, do you think that you've um, experienced, gotten to that elusive middle ground where you don't need the charge and you can still write and, and you don't have to, to be sick to write? I think you know, being sick prevents me from writing. You know, I, I can tell you right now that I'm not able to write when I'm sick. And the, the perception that, you know, the mad genius, you know, on fire with inspiration when in this sort of divine madness is, is total nonsense. Uh, because when you're sick, you can't function. And when you're not functional, you can't work. You know, I am perfectly willing to spill out thousands of pages of garbage when I'm manic because the language centers of my brain have lit up when I'm manic. And so I wrote, for example, four years worth of the center of winter it was absolute trash I had to throw the entire thing out start over when medicated and then I wrote a decent book and that uh, was your your second book and that it was, was my a novel. second book a novel and I couldn't write it for four years because I was absolutely for example batshit and so when I sat down to write it once stabilized I was able to put it out in less than a year um, when I'm sick, I may want very badly to express. I may feel terribly creative, but my thought process is non-unitary. It's non. It's non-clarified. I cannot express in a clarified, uni unitary way that I need to when I'm trying to write something that can communicate with someone else. I am writing for myself, which is a waste of an artistic time. Okay. Um, what? about this journey has been, and I, I, I did feel that it was a journey, and that you are on a journey. Mm -hmm. it, and actually, as I got to the end of the book, I, I, I was like, oh, I, wait, it's, there's no happy, there's not enough pages for a happy ending. <laughs> wait, <laughs> it's, it's ending, well. we're still in trouble. <laughs> um, but <laughs> if you think of it as a journey, what has been most, what has been most difficult about the journey, and where are you now? 